Hello, Vanya. Thanks so much for coming. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yes. Yeah. Glad to be here today. Yeah. Thank you. So, Vanya, did you want to tell us a bit more about yourself before we started? Okay. Uh, I'm actually working as assistant senior counselor at one of the social service agencies, and I yeah. work primarily with um, inmates and your families. Okay. So. Vanya, today we are here to talk about burnout, which I know is something that's quite close to your heart. Do you have like a personal experience that you wanted to share about it? Well, I haven't really actually experienced burnout, uh, thankfully, yep. <laughs> in my social service career. But mm-hmm. I do come close to that to a point that I started to ask myself uh, what was actually my passion and my purpose in doing what I was doing. So okay. I think, yes, with your question, definitely, I think to a certain extent, all of us do actually experience a certain sense of burnout. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I guess before talking about like how to resolve burnout, I mean, what, mm. what is burnout for you? How, how can practitioners know that, oh, I'm getting close to it? I think first and foremost, uh, physically wise as well. If you really, really lethargic, you feel really fatigued um, the, at the mention of just work itself, you know, where mm-hmm. it be it case notes, SSNet or whatever it is, uh, yeah. you get really tired and you have this very drained phase or probably even a sense of stress as well that affects your sleep, you know, affects your daily activities. Mm-hmm. I think these are a little bit of signs that you're moving towards burnout physically. Of course, uh, mentally as well. So you don't really have, you find yourself really drained out. You don't really have a sense of um, keenness even to go into office Mm -hmm. sometimes it's like okay you know just going for the sake of going but you're wondering why are you here so yeah some of the signs and probably symptoms to look out for yeah sure Mm -hmm. those are great symptoms Uh, I mean so Vanya uh, what do you think causes burnout especially in the social work field well, if I could look at it, what causes burnout? Uh, firstly, I would have to say mundanity. Sometimes, you know, we come to a point that you're really very mundane. You don't actually yeah. find any joy in what you're doing. And uh, burnout also because there's this loss of direction. So perhaps it's like you've been doing the same thing over and over again and you wonder, what are you doing <laughs> actually? You know, yeah. perhaps your expectations when you came into the social service sector was to help people. But maybe if you expand that a little bit, it's about helping people in based on different areas as well. So perhaps you find yourself being stuck in certain direction and you probably mm-hmm. ask yourself, I want to help people, but then, you know, why am I always being helping people only in this area? So for example, if you're a new social worker, you may find yourself being stuck with financial assistance reports all the time. And you're wondering, is yeah. this the only area, you know, that you're going to work with? That also is one of the areas that causes burnout. Of course, mm-hmm. another thing would be... Um, so a lack of career development, you may find yourself being very much um, stifled at the other end. And perhaps you wonder, you know, uh, where am I going forward from here? And you probably think that maybe I'm not suitable for this sector after all. Maybe you find that maybe the other things, when you look at other sectors, perhaps you find that it's more attractive. Yeah, things like that do cause burnout. Of course, the other thing is then the lack of appreciation, uh, whether it's from your organization or even your clients and people. And we know that in this people profession, it's mm. a very thankless so yeah, you know yeah. it's really hard to find a culture of appreciation but I think this is something that we could always um, work on and embark on as well uh, both as an organization and even with peers themselves so mm. yeah these are some of the things I think would have been causing burnout in my opinion yeah sure so mm. thanks so much for that Vanya yeah. so I mean for you as a supervisor I guess like how do you actually help your supervisees through this well, for me, um, first and foremost, I mean, I would actually ask them to acknowledge that there is burned out. You know, in an Asian culture, many times we look at face value. So yeah. we're always thinking, okay, we shouldn't tell people that actually we're very tired. And we probably take on everything, even if you say that you're actually not able to cope. But I think one of the things I do encourage is that if they're really not able to cope, to mm. come clean about it, to be honest about it. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, later on for us as advisors to look at how to help them as well. So if mm-hmm. they're saying that they're very tired and they're reaching to the point of burnout, then perhaps we would need to ask them, you know, what is it that caused their burnout as well? Is it about the cases? Is it about themselves? Is it about, you know, reflecting upon not just the cases alone, but I think it's important as a supervisor to also help them to self-reflect on themselves. So Mm. perhaps, you know, what are some things that are causing their burnt out based on their personality, perhaps based on who they are as a person? Yeah. Mm, mm, Mm. mm. And, and, And those are really important points. Uh, from the supervisor's point of view, like, but for the worker himself or herself, like, what can he do uh, to help himself? 
I think it's important. Firstly, we have heard a lot about self-care, you know, mm -hmm. um, going activities yeah. that you enjoy, finding the time to really spend time with your loved ones, your families and your friends. But I think also important wise or equally important is communication. I think one thing that's important is communicating how you feel uh, to your supervisors, to your peers as well. And don't be afraid to actually seek professional help even if you need to. Mm. Um, you know, my motto in the line is that basically you can't give to other people if you can't even take care of yourself. So firstly, if you find yourself dry, mm -hmm. you know, then it's important to kind of refresh yourself again so that you can give yeah. to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, Vanya, you, you've seen like people burn out, I guess. And, and I mean, for you, right, what, what are the common challenges that you see res in, in resolving burnout for, for workers? I think it's also due to um, the current landscape of... Mm -hmm probably the whole organization in terms of even though there's open door policies but I think as I mentioned earlier a lot of us are probably afraid to even talk to our bosses that we are feeling burnt out so yeah. one of the challenges perhaps is really having to break that mold of having th that cycle being broken in terms of the Asian culture and saying that you know perhaps not just um, classes because I know that a lot of people are talking about it, you know, having mental health classes, having probably like, you know, relaxation classes via Zoom or via anything like that uh, to actually kind of, uh, you know, build up with that burnout issue. So for example, let's say having mental health classes so as to help them to better manage their emotions. Mm. But I feel that it's not just about having classes alone. I think what's more important is also having probably yeah. even internal support groups, you know, where workers can actually have an outlet to share and have this culture of basically having a sense of openness and not saying that, okay, you know, maybe each and everyone should do our own work and things like that. So bonding, I think, can also be extended, not just activity-wise, but also in terms of really coming together and supporting each other. Perhaps that would be one of the areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. okay. Sure, that's, that's, that's really important. So you mentioned about how the organization can build this, uh, things like, like an internal support group to help people feel more open and sharing about their own like troubles and their own difficulties. And, and that is like really, really important. I mean, is there anything else that you feel like organizationally that, uh, that, that can help with, with burnout? I think for burnout wise organizations um, probably would be helpful if they actually also not just support groups, um, you know, for their own peers or internally, but I think it's also good to actually have um, different levels in the organization come down to understand the needs of the work. Workers. So, for example, let's say, you know, if you have your HR department and you find that actually people are saying they are very burnt out and you find that a lot of people are not happy at their workplace, mm -hmm. then I think if you want to look at how um, to instill a sense of meaningfulness in their workplace wise, I think what's important is actually to have people of different levels engage in probably talks or engage in kind of informal kind of chats you yeah. know to to have yeah. this culture of where everybody has a trust and open relationship i know it sounds very um ideal but you know doing it is actually a different thing altogether because i think this is something that perhaps asian wise we don't really do it because we're more reserved to what we do but i think uh, it can actually be and something that can be explored as well because i think it's important to understand each other not just the work we do but why we're doing what we're doing so in order to find that out we need to actually build that relationship with each other yeah yeah mm -hmm. sure and and that's that's really important i mean i just wanted to zoom in a bit more on the worker himself mm -hmm. i think as as young professionals right many social workers are scared of admitting to the fact that hey i'm i'm burnt out i'm i'm uh, i'm not really coping very well uh, but I think the fear is like, if I say this, then I will get sacked or I will yeah. be like put on like no pay leave or, or something like that, right? So, yeah. I mean, how, how, how can we like overcome some of this like uh, reservations around talking about burnout? Because talking about it seems to be the first step in resolving it. You know, I, I feel that actually you're right to say that actually a lot of people have a lot of fear based on that. They would think that maybe they'll lose their job or probably mm -hmm. even reputation wise. How would yeah. my boss view me if I say I'm burnt out? But I think if you look at it long term, uh, you know, it's important to acknowledge that because if we keep it uh, under wraps for a very long time, mm -hmm. eventually when burnout happens, it will be very catastrophic for that person and also for the organization who may not understand why the person suddenly tendered his or her resignation. So mm -hmm. um, one thing that I could think about for new social workers is perhaps if let's say 
you know, um, in order to make them feel welcome in the organization. I think one thing that's important is also to help them to understand that an open policy with supervisors or senior social workers or even directors are important as well. So mm. perhaps it's to build up, a, you know, for example, some organizations that uh, I'm aware of in other countries also, they practice this called um, something like an indirect, informal kind of uh, bonding day, you know, where basically mm. they get to know the new social workers and it's nothing about formalities. It's actually just to get to know them as people uh, what are their enjoyment what are things that they are good at what they have done in the past their good achievements they can share about you know things like that and so I think that actually helps to build up and help them to understand that an organization is not just coming in for work as social workers but it's also about coming in together so that uh, you can build your relationship with your supervisors with people above you and I think that actually helps to um, um you know, help the worker to be more open and it helps the worker to feel a little bit more comfortable uh, trusting in terms of having, you know, okay, it's okay to self-disclose, it's okay to actually tell uh, mm. people in my organisation how I feel. So I'm not too sure how it works, but I think that's something that perhaps if they're really looking into burnout for new social workers, even that is important. But I think another thing on a more macro scale that's important as well is how do we actually uh, retain social workers, you know, uh, on the topic of burnout as well because I think a lot of things have been done um, on a macro scale, be it the sabbatical leave issues, mm. the, the issues about, you know, being able to take time off for courses and different, different programs. But I hope that things can also be in place for young social workers as well. So it's not just about uh, for those who have certain years in the in the field, but I think it's also important for young social workers to actually have an outlet that's given to them uh, to deal with their burnt out. So it could be, for example, yep. I understand that there will be a lack of manpower, but maybe it's about you know mm -hmm. distribution and probably if you find that the social worker A is actually being burnt out as well, how does the teammate of social worker B or C cover in for this time? And then after that, when he or she is able to come back again, maybe after two weeks or so, uh, things like that can be worked out within the organization yeah in terms of the hr policies perhaps yeah sure and yeah thanks thanks so much for sharing about that uh yeah i mean that's really important mm -hmm. i mean something that we're noticing in helping uh social workers to self-care is especially difficult during this uh, period of time uh during covid especially when there are so many blood boundaries so usually home would be a safe place where you can rest and retreat now you're having those difficult conversations maybe on your bed on your table in your bedroom and uh, it becomes uh, very difficult to draw those like uh, boundaries right between mm. like your home and your work uh, mm. and I mean how how can social workers do do some of that in terms of caring for themselves in in this increasingly blurred boundaries I mean today uh, you, you are not just contacted over email, right? Your clients can contact you over WhatsApp at any time of the day. And uh, that almost seems to be an expectation that you are supposed to reply. Mm. Yes. I have many professionals who are communicating with me like at 10 p.m., um, child protection, for example, uh, and, and all these things happen, right? And, and it increases the possibility of burnout. So how, how can social workers like draw these boundaries better? I think um, first and foremost, yes, I, I do agree with you that it's been very blurred since the COVID-19 issues. And, and yep. like, you know, many times we have been expected to reply even in the middle of night and sometimes mm -hmm. early morning. But I think what's important is we need to know our boundaries very well in terms of um, practicing assertiveness. So, mm -hmm. for example, if yes, we are supposed to actually reply at certain time of the morning to our clients, um, mm -hmm. but we also know that sleep is important. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Family time, family time is important. Yeah. And of course, self-care as well. So as much as we talk about it, I think it's important to put that into practice. And what can be done is that although the boundaries are blurred, we need to actually have a sense of self-awareness, self-assertiveness, meaning to say, for example, let's say if your bosses tell you to do the work, it's not that you're not going to do the work, but if you're overworked, then it's about really being self-aware of that and asking your boss can you actually drag to another time you know perhaps for example if he can postpone the work to another two weeks or so or one week or so and you know that you will do the work but you just need time out too 
manage your work as well. And I think that is important. Mm-hmm. So being self-aware of how much you can take and how much you can't take, uh, that is very, very pivotal to me because if not, you'll be ending up taking everything. And again, it leads yeah. to burnt up. So one of the things is this. The other thing is also for your clients. I understand social workers, you know, we are always very in for being helping people. So you do feel yeah. very bad if you can't help your clients. Um, mm-hmm. But again, um, how much do you help your clients? And how much is it that he or she can actually help him or herself? help so yeah again you know if they call you in the middle of the night and it becomes a daily affair then it will definitely interfere into your own private life you know so again if we have to be very firm and we probably need to let the let the client know that actually as social workers we have also had our time and we will help the client but not this time you know maybe we would want to arrange another time where we are actually in the day perhaps and we are busy at work but we would spend a certain hour to a certain hour to actually spend uh, the time to look into the areas that we can help this client I think that is uh, something that also helps the client to understand the meaning of boundaries because clients tend to always call us at different times of the day so yeah um, yeah, this also to instill in them the importance of having their own time for themselves as well Mm, okay so yeah thanks thanks for sharing that i mean vanya you you shared something interesting about like you how you personally manage it as well i mean i understand your work is actually uh quite irregular in terms of the hours not like normal working office hours i mean how, how do you manage that yourself for myself, I think, uh, mm-hmm. yes, my work is actually very inflexible. So it doesn't end at five or six, actually. Yeah. Um, but because mine is a whole day affair, what I do is I prioritize very much. Uh, what mm-hmm. is important to be done will be done in the day when I'm actually very much fresh. And then at night, of course, I know I have to spend time with my clients for case management sessions. Uh, so, of course, mm-hmm. I would also need to prioritize based on um, the risk needs and assessment needs of each client. So, for example, let's say if I know this client is going through a lot of things and you need more time to work with the client on his or her emotions and situations that he or she is going through, then is to really spend more time doing that and then prioritizing what is important for that to be addressed first before you go into the rest of the clients. Of course, one um, thing that we do to make sure that you're actually able to cover all your clients as well for me is to look at where they are at. So for example, if you know that they're working all in the East, then it's to prioritize you know, to have your home visits or whatever it is uh, all in yeah. the East rather yeah. than to run all over Singapore and get yourself overtired. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean mm. that that's very important, right? Like yeah. I mean even these practical things like where you see your clients uh putting and batching them all together if they are like in the same location, all this really helped. Uh yeah. before we end that, uh was there anything else you wanted to share that I haven't asked? Mm, I actually don't have anything much to share. Maybe you yeah. might want to ask any further questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I mean, one, one last question. I mean, in, in this whole area of burnout, what, what do you think is the most Im- important thing? I think what's important uh, when you face burnout or if you're in the verge of burnout or even for your own knowledge of burnout is to ask yourself, even if you go through it, um, what have you learned actually from this experience? And of mm. course, you know, having burnout doesn't mean that, oh, you know, um, you end here because of course we will have either way you have to move on in your life in terms of different chapters. You may still be in the social service. You may yeah. not be. Um, but whatever it is, whether you're moving into a new chapter or not, um, is to ask yourself what have you learned? And if let's say um, you gather the points what have you learned from here, but whether it is better self-awareness, whether it's awareness of myself, awareness of other people, awareness of my work, um, to other any other reason, then you have to ask yourself the second question that I raised um, previously in another area as well, which is what can you actually unlearn from this? So as much as we can learn, what can you unlearn? And then of course, thirdly, what can you do differently? So for example, burnout happens in across different sectors, not just in social services. I mean, there are lots of different issues that causes burnout in different sectors as well. So mm-hmm. what could we do differently if and any problems or any challenges actually trigger us to burn out? We need to be aware of those triggers, but what can we do differently so that we don't actually go down the same path again mm-hmm. um, if we face such challenges in future? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much, uh, Vanya. You're Thanks welcome. so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank no you. No problem.